Let's talk about ESGs. If you are confused as to why a global corporation or an American corporation would do something so nonsensical as to cater to what one to three percent, maybe less of the population and alienate the other. Well, you're not going to, they're not going to alienate all of the other 99 or 97 percent, but they're alienating, they stand the risk of alienating a large percentage of them. Bud Light's an example, uh, Ford is an example, people are you know, uh, giving them backlash, right? The other uh, one that I recently saw is North Face. This doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that they would do this. And so the other day I heard someone talk about, oh yeah, and I've heard about this before. I've heard about this for a while, these environmental social governance, right? And there could be some investment money coming into these companies that we're not seeing that is driving some of this stuff. You know, something, it doesn't make sense. Something isn't right. And I want to dive into a couple articles. In this video, I usually read one article, but I'm going to read two articles. Uh, so let's jump into this first one here. But before we jump in, if you like this video, give me a like, uh, subscribe for more information like this. You can also subscribe on social media at G Mark Phillips everywhere. I share little short videos there. Let's jump in and see what we have here. So again, I will put the information, the link in the description down below. This title is An Inconvenient Truth About ESG Investing from March 31st of 2022. All right, let's get into it here. So uh, the summary says, investing in sustainable funds that prioritize ESG goals, That remember that's environmental and social governance, is supposed to help improve the environmental and social sustainability of business practices. Yeah, that's just a bizarre, those things really don't, I, I you know, it's, it's a weird, I, they, they don't go together that well, right? Can businesses certainly steer and, and make choices and do things to help improve the world? Absolutely. But this all seems forced. It seems artificial and forced. Unfortunately, close analysis suggests that it's not only not making difference to companies' actual ESG performance, it may actually be directing capital into poor business performers. See, that's what I'm worried about. That's what I'm worried about. Let's get into this. As of December 2021, assets under management at global exchange traded sustainable funds that publicly set environmental, social, and governance ESG investment objectives amounted to more than 2.7 trillion. 81% were in European-based funds. That's interesting. So the majority over in Europe and 13% in US-based funds. In the fourth quarter of 2021 alone, 143 billion in new capital flowed into these ESG funds. How have investors fared? Not that well, it seems. To begin with, ESG funds certainly perform poorly in financial terms. <laughs> Isn't that the whole point of an investment? In a recent journal of finance paper, University of Chicago researchers analyzed the Morningstar sustainability ratings of more than 20,000 mutual funds representing over $8 trillion of investor savings. Although the highest rated funds in terms of sustainability certainly attracted, attracted more capital than the lowest rated funds, none of the high sustainability funds outperformed any of the lowest rated funds. That result might be expected as it is possible that investors would be happy to sacrifice financial returns in exchange for better ESG performance. Unfortunately, ESG funds don't seem to deliver better ESG performance either. <laughs> so it's a double whammy. It looks like a double whammy. You lose, it's a lose-lose. Researchers at Columbia University and London School of Economics compared the ESG record of U.S. companies in 147 ESG fund portfolios and that of U.S. companies in 2,428 non-ESG portfolios. They found that the companies in the ESG portfolios had worse compliance record for both labor and environmental rules. So that's weird. They also found that companies added to ESG portfolios did not subsequently improve compliance with labor or environmental regulations. This is not an isolated finding. A recent European Corporate Governance Institute paper compared the ESG scores of companies 
invested in by 684 U.S. institutional investors that signed the United Nations Principles of Responsible Investment, PRI. Anything coming from the United Nations, I wouldn't sign anything they do. Um, and 6,481 institutional investors that did not sign the PRI during 2013 to 2017, they did not detect any improvement in the ESG scores by, of companies held by PRI, signatory funds subsequent to their signing. Hmm. Furthermore, the financial returns were lower and the risk higher for the PRI signatories. Yeah, that's weird. That, 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 that's so counterintuitive. Why are ESG funds doing so badly? Part of the explanation may simply be that an express focus on ESG is redundant. In competitive labor markets and product markets, corporate managers trying to maximize long-term shareholder value should of their own accord pay attention to employee, customer, community, and environmental interests. On this basis setting, excuse me, on this basis, setting ESG targets may actually distort decision making. Hmm. Okay, I can see that. Maybe like trying to be too, too environmental and social and, and ch make those changes. There's also some evidence that companies publicly embrace ESG as a cover for poor business performance. Why not, right? You know, as a side note, how many times has the government created a program and then that program becomes exploited and people do massive fraud to it, which hurts us all, wastes money, takes money out of the taxpayer base. I mean, it, all those things happen. Look how much fraud went down under the COVID over the last three years. And look how much fraud went down under those PP&E or those loans they were giving out to, to everybody. Massive amounts. Um, let's see here. A recent paper by Ryan Flugum of the University of Northern Iowa and Matthew S Souther of the University of South Carolina reported that when managers underperformed the earnings expectations set by analysts following their company, they often publicly talked about their focus on ESG. But when they exceeded earnings expectations, they made few if any public statements related to ESG. Hence, sustainable fund managers who direct their investments to companies publicly embrace ESG principles may be over-investing in financially underperforming companies. The conclusion to be drawn from this evidence seems pretty clear. Funds investing in companies that publicly embrace ESG sacrifice financial returns without gaining much, if anything, in terms of actually furthering ESG interests. That doesn't surprise me at all. There's so much weird shit going on right now in our world that is it just doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense. All right, let's go into this other article here and see what we got. I'm going to see if I can move that. And this is from the New York Post. Inside the CEI system pushing brands to endorse celebs like Dylan Mulvaney. And we'll find out what CEI means here in a minute. Um, Kate Spade, New York, is among the corporations who made trans actress Dylan Mulvaney a brand ambassador. This is an article from April 7th, 2023, fairly recent. Executives at companies like Nike, Anheuser-Busch, and Kate Spade, whose brand endorsements have turned controversial trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney into today's woke it girl, aren't just virtue signal signaling. You know, and I will say this, it is suspicious that all brands want Dylan Mulvaney. I mean, what, what really is going on there? Like the hot new thing? Okay, whatever. Uh, they're handing out lucrative deals to what were once considered fringe celebrities because they have to, or risk failing an all-important social credit score that could make or break their businesses. This looks juicy, sounds juicy. At stake is their corporate equity index, excuse me, corporate equality index or CEI score, which is overseen by the human rights campaign, the largest LGBTQ plus political lobbying group in the world. Oh, brother. HRC, which has received millions from George Soros Open Society Foundation, that's a huge red flag right there, 
Among others, issues report cards for America's biggest corporations via the CEI, awarding or subtracting points for how well companies adhere to what HRC calls its rating criteria. So the human rights campaign. Brother, bizarre world we are living in. Businesses that attain the maximum 100 total points earn the coveted title best place to work for LGBTQ equality. <laughs> okay. Whatever, 15 of the top 20 Fortune-ranked companies received 100% ratings last year, according to HRC data. So they're, they're chasing this. They made it up. It does, I mean, it, everything's made up. I mean, they're chasing this number, this CEI. And at, to what end and what, for what reason? Because someone, because Soros made it? All right, that's bizarre. More than 840 U.S. companies racked up high CEI scores, according to the latest report. You know, this could be this could be the reason why all these companies are rolling out massive ad campaigns and massive new product launches for you know June, right? It, it could be the very reason. The HRC, which was formed in 1980 and started the CEI in 2002 is led by Kelly Robinson, who was named as president in 2022 and worked as a political organizer for Barack Obama's 2008 presidential campaign. So that tells you background to there, that person. The HRC lists five major rating criteria, each with its own lengthy subsets for companies to gain or lose CEI points. Let's see if I can read this here. Woke rating, advocacy group, human rights, campaign introduced the 100 point corporate equality index to score companies on their inclusiveness workforce protections five points possible no discrimination for employment for sexual orientation or gender identity number two inclusive benefits 50 points possible criteria here includes providing health care for sex sex couples maybe that means same sex couples Three, supporting an inclusive culture, 25 points possible, including gender neutral dress codes and trans inclusive restroom facilities. Yeah, that's yikes. You got to add new restrooms. Um, corporate social responsibility, 20 points possible. Marketing or advertising to LGBTQ consumers, which would include Nike and Bud Light's use of transgender spokesperson. So that so that makes sense. And I, like I said, the North Face just rolled out a bunch of a new product line too, directed to LGBTQ consumers. And five, last but not least, responsible citizenship. Um, not sure why it says negative twenty-five points deducted if a company gives money to organizations whose primary mission includes advocacy against LGBTQ equality, which is not delivered, not defined, and could include Christian groups. Holy smokes, that is scary. The CEI is made up of several main scoring components. Okay, the main categories are workforce protections, inclusive, we read those categories. A company can lose CEI points if it doesn't fulfill HRC's demand for integration of intersectionality in professional development skills based or other training or if it doesn't use a supplier diversity program with demonstrated effort to include certified lgbtq suppliers uh, james lindsay a political podcaster who runs a site called new discourses told the post that the human rights campaign administrate administers the CEI ranking like an extortion racket, like the mafia. It does sound like that. It's like you will do these things or you won't get your cookie, right? It doesn't just sit back passively either. HRC sends representatives to corporations every year telling them what kind of stuff they can make visible at the company. They give them a list of demands, and if they don't follow through, there's a threat that you won't keep your CEI score. I got to tell you, I would take tell them to shove it that CEI score right up you know where. The CEI is a lesser known part of the burgeoning ESG, environmental, social, corporate governance, ethical investing movement, increasing pushed by the country's top three investment firms. ESG funds invest in companies that oppose fossil fuels, push for unionization and stress racial and gender equality, or excuse me, equity over merit in hiring, over merit, over merit. That's awesome. In hiring 
and board selection. And so th therefore what you're saying is, you know, you, you guys in the L you guys and gals in the LGBTQ community, we're going to, we're going to give it to you, even if you're worse than the other people. That's such a slap in the face to those people, both, both people. It's ridiculous. As a result, some American CEOs are more concerned about pleasing BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street Bank, who are among the top shareholders of most American publicly traded corporations, including Nike, Anheuser-Busch, and Kate Spade, could be the reason why they jumped in and did those, those silly ad campaigns and that silly marketing. And the question is, are these investments that they're getting into their company by these investment firms enough to offset the losses they're taking in the real world? because people aren't buying their stuff, you know? This week, Mulvaney's new ad campaigns with Bud Light and Nike ruffled the feathers of critics from country star Travis Tritt and Kid Rock, who tweeted a video of himself shooting Bud, cases of Bud Light, which was a crazy video, to female Olympians, and even Caitlyn Jenner, who said of Nike, it is a shame to see such an iconic American company go so woke. Wow, even Caitlyn Jenner, see? <laughs> You know, we are out of control, you know. Okay, I think that's, no, that's not the end of the article. Mulvaney26, who transitioned from male to female in the beginning of March 2021, has reportedly earned more than a million dollars from endorsements, including fashion and beauty brands that also include Ulta, Beauty, Haas Labs, House Labs, and CeraVe, as well as Crest and Instacart. She's also gained 10 million followers on TikTok. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But neither Kid Rock nor even Mulvaney are who America's top ex execs are trying to oppress, experts say. The big fund managers, like BlackRock, all embrace this ESG orthodoxy in how they apply pressure to top corporate management teams and boards, and they determine in many cases executive compensation and bonuses and who gets reelected or reappointed to boards. Entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy who is running for president as a Republican and authored Woke Inc. Inside America's Social Justice Scam, told The Post, they can make it very difficult for you if you don't abide by their agendas. It sounds like they can. So, so there's the HRC president, Kelly Robinson, was a former political organizer for Barack Obama's 2008 presidential campaign. So there's her background. In 2018, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, who oversees assets worth $8.6 trillion and has been called the face of ESG, wrote a now infamous letter to CEOs titled A Sense of Purpose that pushed a new model of governance in line with ESG values. I'm going to have to read that letter in a future video. Society is demanding that companies, both public and private, serve a social purpose. I'm not demanding that. So I'm one of approximately eight billion people that doesn't give two hoots. I don't care. I don't need the companies that are, that are I'm buying from to make social change. I'll do that myself. Like I'll be a good conscious, aware person myself. I don't care what they do. You know, go do what you want to do. Be, be a good steward of the resources of the earth and, you know, think it through. Don't create bullshit products and, and waste, be wasteful, but do what you want to do. I don't care. Uh, to prosper over time, every company must not only deliver financial performance, but also show how it makes a positive contribution to society. Hmm. Okay, so for decades, corporations, and some of the largest corporations, the global corporations like the Nestle's and, you know, all global corporations have had their hands slapped. Apple had their hands slapped for using child, excuse me, I, I think they did, and I know Nike did too. They've all had their hands slapped for using child labor, but all of a sudden, oh no, we're going to clean it up. I call bullshit. I think it's all just a bunch of shit. Um, Fink also let it be known that if a company doesn't engage with the community and have a sense of purpose, it will ultimately lose the license to operate from key stakeholders. What in the world? That's ridiculous. In December, Florida pulled $2 billion worth of state assets managed by BlackRock. I th That's so weird. In December, Florida pulled $2 billion worth of state assets managed by BlackRock. I think it's undemocratic of major asset managers to use their power to influence societal outcomes, Governor Ron DeSantis said at the time. Fink has denied that ESG is political. 
But key staff managing his ESG operations worked in the Obama administration and donated to Senator Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. Of course, it's political. Do they think we're stupid? I mean, give me a freaking break. In his first veto, President Joe Biden last month rejected a GOP-backed bill that sought to block ESG investing, especially in pension funds, where critics say American retirement funds will be sacrificed to a radical left-wing agenda. I can definitely see that happening, right? I, let's just put it this way. I wouldn't want any, any of my funds invested in those companies. Uh, protesters in Paris targeted BlackRock's office there this week due to the company's role in managing and privatizing pensions, which are at the heart of the French government's recent retirement age reforms. ESG and CEI proponents say that adhering to socially conscious values when investing and managing a company will make the world a better place. Not everyone agrees. Yeah, I'm again coming from Soros and all the people from the Obama administration. No, thank you. You can, I will pass on this hard pass, hard pass. <laughs> Derek Kreefels is the co founder and CEO of State Financial. Officers Foundation, one of several financial officers fighting ESG on a national level. He calls ESG itself a highly subjective political score infiltrating all walks of life, forcing progressive policies on everyday Americans and resulting in higher prices at the pump and at the store. See, you and I are all going to pay for it. You and I are going to pay for it. The Corporate Equity Index is an ominous cog in ESG's wheel, Krefus told the Post. The problem with measures like CEI and its big brother ESG is that it introduces an incentive structure outside of the bounds of business. It is outside the bounds of business. Business is hard enough, just describing business is hard enough without all this bullshit. If we bog it down, and again, you know, all this stuff is not by accident, right? All the things happening, the gender wars, the, uh, the, the transitioning they want to help kids do early on, all of that is all by design. It has to be by design. Um, it's, got, it's got psychopath and, and a person who wants to sow chaos and destruction written all over it. None of it makes sense. People know it doesn't make sense. But the problem is, and here's where I, where I implore you and I call on you, get involved, speak up. You know, all this shit stops when sane, rational people stand up and say, that's total bullshit. Stop it. It's, it's total bullshit, right? Um, let's finish this off here. Da, 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 da. introduces an incentive structure outside of the bounds of business, often in ways contradictory to fiduciary duty. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. But, but of course, all this social and environmental stuff, oh, that trumps everything. Like we've got to do it at all costs. We have to do it. We have to do it. Bullshit. Kreefel said whether Anheuser-Busch was trying to cash in on Dylan Mulvaney's TikTok following or chasing higher CEI ratings for inclusivity, the backlash has been significant and the stockholders to whom the company is obligated will feel the pinch. You bet they'll feel the pinch. And that's what I'm telling you. It's complete and total bullshit. So really educate yourself. You know, there's Dylan Mulvaney drinking a Bud Light where uh, um, <laughs> it just... It's just so, it's like backwards world we're living in, a bizarre world. I, I don't, you know, I know what Bud Light drinkers look like. I've seen them for my whole life and they never look like that. I've never seen a person, a small percentage, maybe single digits of people that look like that and act like that drinking a Bud Light. So there's, there's no rhyme or reason that that's their target audience. People that look like Dylan Muldaney, if I may stereotype for a moment, they're drinking a Cosmo Tini, right? They're drinking a Martini. They're drinking something, something in that range. That's what I see more often. Again, sharing my personal experience with you. I never see, rarely see a person like that, dressed like that, looks like that, drinking a Bud Light, ever. So there you go. Inside the CEI system pushing brands to endorse celebs like Dylan Mulvaney. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Do you think this is complete and total bullshit? Or are you on board with it? Yeah, I'd love to have your uh, opinion and, and feedback shared. 
Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, I wish you all the best health, wealth, and success. Bye-bye.